Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Ruggiano. And in 1988, I was struggling with addiction and I went into a treatment center. I set up a helpline number, which is 855-963-2113. That's 855-963-2113. That number, phones will be manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're struggling with addiction or you know someone that is struggling with addiction, please call that number and let me help. I will be hands-on. I will be personally involved in the person's recovery. They will meet me. They will spend time with me. And I will help them live a life beyond their wildest dreams. Everybody know the shirts are in Reform Gangsters. If you want to purchase one, please go to my website, anthonyruggiano.com, and order your shirt. Come get them, they're hot. Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Ruggiano Jr., and I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters. And I want to introduce a special guest today who is a very dear friend of mine. I know him since he's a little kid, uh, Jason Blatt, who's the son of Jay Black from Jay and the Americans, who was called The Voice, who was a very, very dear family friend and a great entertainer. And so well, great being show. here, man. I haven't it's seen you in so long. Oh, my just God. Just to see it's your crazy. face is amazing. It, it's amazing. Crazy. It's crazy. You know, and, and, I, and I knew you were coming today, and, I, and I've been thinking about, you know, your father played such a, a big part in my life like this. I have so much, you know, I spent so much time with him, and he was, he was involved in so many episodes in my life, like where things happened and, you know, like, um, you know, and he opened my eyes up to so much and, you know, how he used to take me around with him in limousines and the garden and backstage. And it was just like he opened up this whole world to me. And, you know, and I was thinking about the first time I met him, you know, and um, I remember, you know, I met him because my cousin Vera was like, we talked, I was married to this fellow John, who was your mother, Kathy's cousin. And she brought him to my father because like we talked earlier, your father had a little bit of a gambling issue. A little rest bit. In peace. Just a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. And uh, he ha got jammed up with some wise guys, and he finally found out who my father was, and he has to be introduced to my father. So I remember, so I knew who your father was already from watching him on TV, on the Clay Cole show and Hollabaloo and all these rock, you know, all these shows Band they had on TV American. in the Sixth American Band. So I knew who he was. I knew his music, you know. Caramia locked the door, you know, uh, only in America, you know, I knew all his, all his music. My father really didn't know his music, but he knew he was a celebrity, he knew he was an entertainer, and I remember the day he came by my house, me and my kid brother, we thought Elvis was coming, like, oh my God, Jay Black's coming, and my father made us wait upstairs in the kitchen, remember my house on 88th yeah, Street? Of course, So I my do. father said, don't come down until I call you, right? So they would, so your mother came, your mother, Kathy, and Jay came with my cousin Vera and John. And they were down in my basement. And um, finally, my father said, all right, just come down now, come down. I remember your basement. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, that's where we all yep. ate. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then I, we went down, and I remember your father was sitting at the table downstairs, and he had a beautiful suit on with an ascot, and he had his hair combed. And, like, you know, he looked like a rock star, you know? Yeah. And, and I went, and I was like, I was like amazed, you know? And your mother was beautiful. Your mother yeah. was a beautiful woman with the red hair. And they looked like, uh, mannequins like they were beautiful they looked like models and we got introduced and you know and uh and it was just a love affair immediately like we all just fell in love with each other yeah i have i have a lot of fond memories of going to your house yeah i remember your basement mm. but you know just you know you guys the ruggiano family was always like in the backdrop of my life <laughs> because your, your father played such an instrumental role with my yeah. dad they'd be like you said they they really had a love affair with each other and, and you know the yeah. most plutonic sense right of course. i mean they yeah, were yeah, just yeah. they were like brothers from another mother exactly and yeah. they just had a kinship with each other which yeah. uh re it's really indescribable yeah. oh it's great and i remember we used to go you know then when we we started going to your father's shows of course you know and and my father would sit there and go listen to that voice <laughs> then he introduced, uncanny yeah then he introduced him to tony lee and then he introduced him to john Gotti, and then you know and, uh, you know, listen, the, in the music industry and, you know, the movie industry was always tied into the mob. I mean, it goes back to the Rat Pack days and sure. everything. Um, you know, your father reached, you know, it, but it wasn't really, it, it was more than a mob music industry relationship, that relationship. It was a relationship of friendship. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I wouldn't even think it was like the typical mob music yeah. industry yeah. relationship. You know, the relationship really stemmed 
originally from his gambling problem. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, a and personal fact, issue. Right, right. And the yeah. fact that, you know, uh, my cousins Vera and Johnny, mm. who are, you know, blood relatives mm. to you guys, like made all the connections. Um, it just seemed like it was just like a natural fit that they would become friends and whatnot. But dad, you know, dad grew up in a predominantly Orthodox Jewish yeah. family, yeah. but he was always the black sheep in the family. Yes. You know, he was the guy growing up in Borough Park, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. He ran with all the Italian guys. Mm -hmm. And he always kind of thought of himself as a, a, a minor league thug, right, yeah, right yeah, growing up. Like, yeah. he kind of had that <laughs> Yeah, he always him. had that in him. And, yeah. you know, like I said, he was the black sheep in the family and rebelled against everything that the Orthodox mm -hmm. religion threw at him. Um, and, you know, as he got older and started becoming a little more famous and started, his vices started growing with mm -hmm. gambling and, and dabbling in drugs a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, then your dad came into the picture, and, and and let's just say he alleviated quite a bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah, that he, had oh, going he would have on. done anything from. Yeah, yeah, he would have done anything from. Um, and you know, I don't ever remember anybody calling your father David either. Which no, was just his, you know, which was his real name. I remember like David. I never heard anybody call him. You David. know, some of the shows at Madison Square Garden when yeah. I was a kid, and yeah. his like mom and dad would come, yeah. and she'd be yelling David yeah, in the David, background, yeah, yeah. and he would be like, shut the fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, Shay. no one knows me as that yeah, here, Shay, you know, yeah. and that was kind of funny, yeah. you know, thinking about that. You know, so you grew up with a celebrity father. I mean, I grew up with a wise guy father, but, you know, so I remember. But a know, degree of celebrity in himself. Yes, yeah, right? big time, yeah, definitely, yep. for sure. You know, and, and your father introduced him to a lot of celebrities. I mean, he already knew Sinatra. Remember when then your father made the movie with Sinatra? The contract father, on Cherry Street. The, and not only, you know, people don't know this, but that was the last movie Sinatra made. I think, wasn't it? I think you're right. And your yeah. father killed Sinatra in yeah. that movie. Yeah. At the end of the movie, your father shot him with a with a. Your father killed Sinatra in that I movie. I wish I could. I wish I brought it here, but I have. Yeah. There's a great picture of uh, mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra in my living room and me sitting on his, his lap. lap. Yeah. And yeah. I think Jackie Mason was sitting yeah, Jackie right next Mason. to him. Yeah. Well, he picture. was good friends with your father. Yeah. He you know, was. We, you know, we have. I have so many stories about your father. I, you know, I was just talking to somebody the other day about Don Wrinkles. Don Rickles, yeah, right. the best. So we went, your father loved him. So he was at the Copa in the 70s. He was at the Copa, and my father took you, your mother and Jay, me and Alice, my first wife, who your father loved my first wife, Alice. They, he did anything for her. He, matter of fact, hooked me up. When she was dying, he sent me to this, he felt so bad, he sent me to the specialist. Uh, I mean, he just, he was crazy about Alice. Um, and we went, I got a little emotional then, but he, uh, he, we went to the Copa and we saw the show. Mm -hmm. And then after the show, we went up to the lounge and Carmine, the guy that ran the Copa, brought him up there to meet us. Because my father and your father, and he came up there and, you know, he was just always on it, you know. Which, so my father asked him, what do you want to drink? And he goes, whatever you're drinking, whatever you want, whatever you're drinking, I'll have whatever you're drinking. And then he looked at me and he goes, oh, you're so cute. He pinched my cheek. What a good looking guy. He pinched my cheek. <laughs> and, you know, and then he, oh, him and your father were talking. I mean, it was just, you know, it's just so much when, you, when it was just, it's overwhelming, the, the stuff that your father was involved in in my life. I mean. You, you too. I mean, you lived in our house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, we were just talking about that yeah. outside. You know, yeah. when I was really little, we I remember we lived in one spot in Howard Beach, Queens, and then all of a sudden we moved into this newer house. And I was like, where'd this house come from? You know, and like we didn't even know, but it turns out it was, it was Uncle my, Andy's yeah, house. Yeah, right. Just so you know, we always called him Uncle yeah, Andy. Yeah. You know, that's how we yeah. knew your dad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we always had some characters popping in and yeah, out of that yeah, house. Yeah. I mean, it's funny you brought up Tony Lee yeah. earlier. Uh, I worked for Tony Lee years later as a teenager. He had a video store. Yeah, yeah, he had a video yeah. store. Yeah, 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 video yeah, store, yeah, needless yeah. to say. I mean, Anthony, Anthony, Anthony Alvaro. Alvaro. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I would yeah, sit yeah. in that video store and yeah. guys would come in and there would be the back room. Yeah. And I mean, the back room was the back room. Yeah. I don't have to tell yeah. you what. They would have yeah. little sit-downs back there yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, just, I, I have funny memories of that because my dad would drop me off every day. I wasn't driving yet. Yeah. And he would be like, who's popping in and out? You see Tony? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Tony was there. He popped yeah. in. Who yeah. else? He see? a couple other guys. And they're yeah. like, all right, that's cool. I have a funny story about that video yeah. store, though. One time, um, you know, I was, I'd be working there alone. And, you know, there was like back in the videotape days, they'd have like the little porno section. Yeah. So this guy would come and be like, what's new in the porno section? And I'd be like, I, I, I'd love to mess with people. Yeah. So I'd be like, these tapes just came in. I was like, you got it. They're supposed to be really hot. And the guy was like, give them to me. You know, this yeah. is, you take a videotape home. Yeah. 
And it turns out I gave him a tape full of trannies. Oh, uh, yeah. This guy came in like he wanted to kill me. <laughs> like he came in like throwing it, like threw, threw the fucking thing at me, <laughs> started going crazy. And the guys in the back room came yeah. out and was like, what's going on? Yeah. And, you know, I told them what happened. And, and needless to say, the guy never came back to the video <laughs> store again. He didn't want to come back. That, yeah, definitely So what was going on back yeah, there. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I have tons of stories like yeah. that. Man. So but I mean, you memories. turned out really well. I mean, I remember when you got Thank into God. the stock. Well, your uncle got you into the stock market, right? Wasn't it your uncle that got you into Yeah. The, no, it wasn't your father. No, it wasn't my father. You know, it's my, so funny. My father was from the school. Like, he never yeah. finished high school. Yeah, he my never, father right, either. Yeah. Right, So he was from the school of, yeah. you know, father just what, are you going to, what do you want to go to college for? What do you need that? You know, he was like, I look at me. And I'm like, yeah, but you're lucky. You got a great voice yeah. like i don't have that you know mm -hmm. so uh my uncle Sai, yep, yeah Sai, yeah, Sai i remember name. you remember Sai? yeah sure uh he was a prominent guy on wall street yeah, he had a little time. firm and when i was you know uh just starting in college he's like why don't you come work for me down at the new york stock exchange mm -hmm. i remember when you went yeah and you know what that was uh that was a good move actually yeah. you know I, I mean i'm still in involved in that business i am still been yeah. down there i mean it's had some longevity there you mm -hmm. know could have definitely done better financially but yeah. it's okay hey, yeah I'm, I'm here i'm yeah. alive i'm kicking i'm yeah, breathing so right. i remember when your father started bringing you up on the stage when you were a kid too remember sure. that yeah, yeah i got a great picture of me and him at, on the stage yeah. at madison square yeah. garden which is like everyone yeah. goes nuts when i remember the first time he took me to madison square garden i was in the house in howell beach when sure. you, you were living there and frankie valley and your father were doing who was that producer that big c c what was his name? He was was it Joel Diamond or? No, it was another famous rock producer. I can't think of his name now. Yeah, they did so much yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, anyway, your father was opening for Frankie. Mm -hmm. Frankie just put out Swear to God. Swear oh, to yeah, God. Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember those times. Yeah. So they, Frankie picked us up at, and I, now I'm 19. I'm a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the? Frankie picked us up at the house in Al Beach with the limo. It was me, your father, and Frankie Valley. And I got in the limo with them, and I, here I am with like two rock, guys, Frankie Valley, Jay, and I'm sitting there. I'm 19. We go to the the garden. We go in, you know, up the driveway, yeah, right, up the yeah. ramp, go into the dressing room. Who's there? Murray the K, the famous DJ Murray the K, who was good friends days, with your true. father. So now I'm in the room with Murray the K, who requested that the Beatles requested to meet him when they first came to America. That's how big he was, and the, and your father and. And Frankie, and of course, you know, we're partying. You know, it was a little yeah. something involved. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the 70s. So, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the 70s. You know, I'm 19. <laughs> so we're partying, and 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 uh, Murray the Cave's doing our vase. I remember he used to go, ah, sure. vase. You know, and they gave me the thing to walk around with, and it was crazy. And the garden was sold out, and it was just an amazing time. And I'm walking around, and I'm pulling girls backstage. Come on, you want to meet Jay? You want to meet Frankie? Yeah, you know? that's how it was yeah, back yeah, then, yeah. right? And, uh, yeah, and they were for me, the girls, not for Frank, your father. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Of course. I was pulling them backstage, and the show started, and girls are screaming, sing, swear to God, and your father was blowing them away with that voice. It was amazing. And, you know, Frankie and your father would... would they would come to the front of the stage, and they would dedicate songs to my mother... And your mother was there, and it was just such a great time. It really was a great time back then. Yeah. I mean, Frankie, uh, you know, I still talk to him once in a blue moon. Uh, I mean, I don't have to tell you how great he, it's worked yeah. out for him. Oh, I mean, Jersey it. Boys on Broadway. Your father should up. have been that lucky. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I'll say this about Dad. I mean, he was a very talented guy, but, man, the king of the worst business decisions yeah. ever, you know? He just... Didn't have that acumen in him. He didn't have that and, oomph, that hustle. Yeah, in the last 10 years of his career, I tried to, you know, kind of grab the ram by the horns. And it just, you know, he was pretty unmanageable. Yeah. So, But he should still be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't care what anybody yeah, says. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I mean, maybe in due time, it would have been nice if he his, got in there. Just for his voice alone. Nobody sang like him. No, nobody. I mean, no. there's, there's, I mean, other than maybe like a Roy Orbison. Yeah. I mean, people used know? to name their babies Kara Mia. <laughs> it's so true. Still. <laughs> yeah, I know. Still to this day, I, I get approached by people, hey, my name is Kara, Kara Mia. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, named after your dad's yeah. song. And I'm like, yeah. I love hearing stuff like of that. Of course. I mean, it's great. Of and, course. And, you know, his memory's still with me big time. And, oh, without you know, a doubt. Me day. too. I mean, when I found out he passed away, I was like, I was blown. I, you know, I have so many memories of him, so much. You know, he, he even, I was a, in prison. My father, the last picture I saw of my father alive was a week before he died was with your father and Frankie Valley. They took, Frankie Valley was playing the Westchester 
the, in West... Uh, yeah, that, that premier theater. Right, I remember where your that. father broke the record yeah. stage. was there so many times. Your oh, you're talking about Westbury, Westbury Music, Music Fair, right Fair, here. Yeah. Your father broke mm -hmm. the record. Frankie was doing the show, and my father and f your father went to see the show, and the, the guy that owned an Italian restaurant out near there kept the restaurant open just for the yeah, three sure. to go there after the show. And Frankie and my father and your father went to the restaurant and ate dinner, and a week later, my father passed away. You know, it's yeah. funny. I, I, I was at your dad's funeral. Mm. I remember being there for that. Um, and then I saw him one time before that. It was another funeral. It was the last time I saw your dad alive. I forgot who... who Maybe my bro my uncle might have passed away. Maybe. I don't remember. But, yeah. you know, I unexpectedly showed up. And your dad was like, oh, my God. I can't <laughs> believe you're here. Yeah. You know what's funny, Anthony? I have so many funny memories of being a little kid. And dad taking me and even my, my younger sister, Samantha, yeah. you know, to your dad's like social club, like to the club. <laughs> yeah, like Cafe and, Liberty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cafe yeah. Liberty, right yeah. on Liberty. And I remember being a kid and sitting down and, and your dad would be like, Jason, come here, sit down. And he would put a big bowl of pasta vajol right in front of my <laughs> yeah, face. Yeah, and yeah. me and my sister would just sit yeah, down. And, yeah. and we're we not even realizing until later in life that I had like every big wise guy in the yeah, Gambino yeah. family sitting <laughs> yeah. around me. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. like Ciro and yeah. Tony Lee. Remember yeah, all yeah, these guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, I was like, yeah. oh my God, this is yeah. so funny. Now in hindsight, when I think about it, I was like, that's a movie in itself. That's right. Well, hopefully we're going to make that movie. Yeah, you know what? Day. We, we got to talk about that because yeah, there's too sure. many great well, stories. If I ever do get the pleasure of making a movie, your father is definitely involved in the movie because he's involved in so much of well, our lives. This like, is an crazy. interesting story. So back in 2005, I was over in London. I have a dear friend in the music business that does work with Eric Clapton. So I went there for when Cream reunion, reunited. Okay. Remember the Cream yeah, reunion? Course, yeah. So I went out there for there. And we were at a dinner one night, and who's there but Tom Hanks and his wife. Uh, so I don't know if you know this, but Tom put made a movie called That Thing You Do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. It was, yeah. it was about, like, uh, those uh, 60s cool. bands, yeah, I saw, right? I remember, you know? so yeah, it, it, I remember it well. It struck a real chord yeah. with me because I was like, it's very similar to Dad's story. Right, start, yeah. You know, not exact, but very similar. Mm. And uh, I said to Tom, I was like, you know, I, I told him who I was, who my dad was. And he was like, oh, your dad, Jane the Americans, was one of the influences for that movie. Yeah. So I was like, I got a great idea for a movie. And he yeah. was like, what is it? So I was like, it's like that thing you do meets Goodfellas. <laughs> and he was, was like, yeah, yeah. what a great yeah, idea we gotta for get, a movie. We should contact we should, him. We, uh, we should, like, yeah. do something yeah, with that. I think that could be a, a really be, amazing. Yeah, for sure. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be blown away. Yeah, so I, I have a lot of fun. I, mean, I, I remember, I have another memory. I remember once I went with Dad, and he bought your dad a huge yellow Cadillac. Yeah. Do you remember that? Of course, yeah. I was of like, course. what? Yeah, Coupe Deville. Like, I was like, what a, I was yeah, like, what yeah. a crazy I color. He's like, yeah. I'm getting this for Uncle Andy. Yeah, I remember I that. Like, yeah, I drove that car many times. Yeah. I was like, what kind, of jam, take, did he, what I, kind of jam did he get you I out of for this? I used to take Alice in that car. She loved that car. We used to go out. Yeah, the yellow with the black interior. I remember that. Yeah, it was a Coupe Deville. Beautiful. Yeah, they, it, you know, I wish we could still That's have it. That's when the yeah. caddies were something the caddies, else. Yeah, that was the, yeah, I wrecked his other, <laughs> I learned how to drive in a caddy. I, I remember your father also had that Jaguar. Remember that little Jaguar oh, we had? I, you know what? I loved that. He used to take me to Long Beach. Remember he had the cabanas in Long Beach? Yeah. And I used to love that. Can I tell you something? That, that Jaguar came up in conversation the other day because I was with yeah. my wife and some guy pulled up next to us in a, a red XKE just like that. Yeah. And my, my wife was like, didn't your dad have one of those? I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah he it was did. Black, it, your father's, but right it was, it was dark blue. Dark but blue, yeah. I remember I used to come home from day camp and just want to take a ride in that yeah. all the time. And then one day I came home and the car was gone. Right. And yeah. Yeah. you had to pay the bookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's a true yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah, like bummed to, about that. I used to love to drive to Long Beach in that car. I remember when you just had the cabanas on yeah, the Atlantic Beach. Beach. Yeah, yeah, right Beach there. Club. Yeah, yeah, of course. We used to go, I, used to, I love, used to love to go there with him. You were a little kid. I used to take me there I remember when time. you guys used to come. Yeah, I used to go all the time with him. Him and your mother talked to all the ladies, all the Jewish ladies. They loved you guys <laughs> back then. <laughs> they loved us. Yeah. You guys were like yeah, the and, and I was with you him. You guys were like flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were something new. Yeah, a new toy to play with. Yeah. Well, he introduced me to, he introduced me. He, then he used to hang out. There was this disco back out there in the five towns. and uh, Cartoons. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's some scene back yeah, then. Yeah, that's the, yeah. yeah. And, and, and he hooked me up with this really wealthy woman. And she took me to her house. And she had like a sunken living room. And it was this big mansion. And But she was a little... She was a little kinky. She wanted her husband to like join in with us. <laughs> so, uh, I, so he wanted yeah, the husband to watch. Yeah, so... After whatever, I went back to your father's house. I think this was right around the time he was dating Andy. 
And I said to him, what kind of mood did you fix me up with? That girl's crazy. Yeah, that was like an early He was 80s. laughing. He tells me, your father, did you meet a husband? I said, oh, you knew, huh? You started, you knew, he knew, he knew it was going. He goes, oh, did you meet a husband? I said, you knew, you <laughs> fuck, what, are you kidding me? Yeah. I'll and say this, that he had the best sense of humor. He was hilarious. Yeah, he was he crazy. He could have been a stand-up comic. He really could have. If he didn't have a voice, he could have been a stand-up well, comic. Well, towards the later years, I mean, his voice was still amazing till the yeah. day he passed oh, yeah. away. Yeah. But. but but he was like really known to be more of an yeah, entertainer yeah, than just a, a singer. I right, mean, that's yeah, what his doubt. his career evolved. And it's a shame, with, you know, that with the court cases and everything, you know, and it's crazy. I go to the movie theater. Remember, I called you up a couple months ago to tell you he's in his song is in the new movie now the about Scalco my movie. father. Yeah, yeah with it De Niro. Great. But now, before that, Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm in the movie theater with my kids, yeah. and all of a sudden. I, I go, oh shit, that's Jay. I heard his voice. Yeah, which, it's so weird. It's when you, such a shame. He, didn't get, he doesn't get any of the royalties I for know, that. It's I such know. a shame because, you it's know, a, all those yeah. older bands made terrible business decisions yeah, back in the day. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, I reconnected recently with some of the old Americans. Kenny you know, who, and all of them. Kenny, well, Sandy. Kenny, we were always kind of in touch with because yeah. Kenny, although, you know, he didn't reunite with the Americans. He stayed yeah, on he his, stayed own, his and, own. Yeah, You know, he, he was very loyal to dad in the yeah. sense that he didn't want to go back to Jane the Americans if dad wasn't going to do it mm. you know but Kenny and his band the Planetones you know toured with us quite a bit in the later years and yeah. you know I was always friendly with Kenny but like the other guys like Sandy and Marty, Marty. Uh, I had reconnected with Marty once dad passed away uh, it was a nice reconnection you know and, mm. and talking to Marty kind of filled the void of my dad not being there because that Marty and dad went back to their you know yeah, high school cool. yeah right you know, that's were, I think Marty brought your father yeah in, Marty right? brought dad into yeah, Jane the yeah, Americans because yeah. that that band existed before because they had a, a, a different there was Jay. another Jay right, you know they right. had a minor hit and record he tried to tour a little bit too after when your father was alive didn't he well his name was Jay Trainer. Yeah. he left the band after they had a minor hit with uh she cried she cried and he thought he could do it on his own yeah. and he left and that didn't Your necessarily work out. Cried, by the way, right Jay right Trainer, nice guy though. I yeah. got to know him later in the years. Uh, you know, they brought Dave Bladden, who yeah. Jay yeah. became Jay, Jay Black, Black. Yeah. and uh, you know that's all history. And it's funny. I don't know if you know this. How Dad got the name Jay Black? Did you ever know that? I, I probably did. I forgot. So Tell he us. was on the Mike Douglas show. Remember the yeah. Mike Douglas yeah, of show? And yeah. uh, Mike Douglas was like, Jay, what's your last name? And he said Blatt. Yeah. And Mike heard him wrong and was like, Jay Black, what a great name. Yeah, and, yeah. and it stuck. That and it. that was yeah, it. You yeah, know? That was so it, that, yeah. was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so getting back to the American so I yeah. reconnected with Marty. Um, you know, we talked, we talked quite a bit. And then I reconnected with Sandy, spoke with him a little bit. And then last summer, Jay and the Americans got inducted into what's called the East Coast Music Hall of Fame down in Atlantic City, and uh, those guys called me. They were like, listen, we can't rightfully accept this award without having someone represent your dad. Right. Yeah, so I thought that was really nice because yeah, they nice. didn't have to yeah, do they, that. They, you know, yeah. they were estranged from yeah. dad, and, you know, dad, you know, I didn't necessarily agree with the way dad was with them, too. I, yeah. I, was, I kind of pushed for a reunion a long time ago because, mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, these reunion acts do tremendous. Right? Yeah, big time. He didn't want to do it. Like I said, it all stems back yeah. to dad's not a great <laughs> business guy. Yeah, yeah. Plus, he had a big ego, your father. Big ego, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, so it was really nice to reconnect it with them. I got up on stage. I played a few songs with them. Yeah. Um, I met the new guy that's, I guess, the new the Jay. Jay. Yeah. who is a really nice guy you know yeah. i i wanted to not like him yeah of course but he was so nice and he came to me and was like i idolized your father growing up and he's the reason i, I emulate him and i mean what could you what can you say to that nothing it's Thanks. a tribute yeah, you know i was like that's beautiful and yeah. you know it was really nice being with them and then on top of that like joan jett inducted yeah. us oh, into oh, the yeah, hall of fame because you know something i didn't really wasn't aware of but kenny laguna a longtime manager producer is really who discovered Jane the Americans. Yeah. So that's that was the connection. I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. But, but your father had a big heart. I mean, he was he had a big heart. Your he father, did. He had. He'd give you whatever he could do. You know, he 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 never said no. Like I was telling you, like you know, I was in prison in 1979. You know, cause your father was a celebrity. My father was a wise guy. Like you learned how to play the guitar. I learned how to be a bookmaker. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So so I'm in prison in 79, and we had the Italian American Festival. Yeah. 
And your father used to come visit me all the time because I was in Staten Island. Yep, he would right. pop up. I remember And that. all the COs would go, Jay, it's downstairs. It was like, like you know, because he was just, and the whole prison, when he was in the visiting room, like all the COs would run down to meet him. And it was, and uh, he used to come visit me with your mother all the time, with my wife, Alice. And uh, it was Italian American Festival. And, and, and he came in to the show for yeah. us. With, uh, with Staley Dan, the guys from Staley Dan, they were in the group, they were yep. his backup. And he did the show, it was in the newspaper, and the warden didn't come to us, he wouldn't come to our festival for some reason. I think he got, he wasn't, he wasn't insult. He, something, he just didn't show up. So we got a little resentful, so when I, after the show ended, I went into his office, because he called us in, he, he gave us a, he was supposed to give us a certificate in front of everybody, but he didn't, he gave it to us, in his office, so I told him, this year I had Jay and the Americans, if I'm here next year, Sinatra's coming, I told him. <laughs> he, he, didn't like, he didn't like that, but your father always always looked out for me, he always came there, came there, always visited me. I mean, even weddings, he did John Gotti's daughter's wedding. Yeah, I was my, just gonna, t I wanted yeah, to talk to you about, yeah. about, so about all my, those. My father, so of course he met John Gotti through my father, you know, cause, yep. but he, so he was what my father, and my father had put it. So when you're with a wise guy, it goes on record. Everybody knew that he was with Fat Andy. That was the whole who you with. Right. Yeah. Who you who you with. And 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 uh, so but the Gambino family, Jay was part of that crew. That and and then when my father went away, Tony Lee handled your father, whatever needed your father needed done, Tony took care of. Tony was not like my father. They no. were, I was yeah. just going to say, Tony Lee, I remember there always being a little friction. Your father, Jet, your father would always call me and say, are you going to be in the club today? I got to meet Tony Lee. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. like I always had your father's back. I say, yeah, all right, I'll meet you there. Because Tony liked to yell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I always like, because I remember that vividly as yeah. a kid. Yeah. Like him and Tony Lee never got yeah. along. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what that was about. I think he, I, I don't know, I, maybe. Well, Tony used to, you know, I love your father. You know, we would be in. We would be at your father's shows, and it was so, they were like it was so funny. So, so my father would go, you know, like pre his voice, like oh my god, you hear that voice? And Tony would go, how much is that going to cost us? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah, true. yeah. Then you're, you're, you're Tony yeah, Lee yeah, had yeah, like yeah, a more pragmatic yeah, 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 business yeah, exactly. approach to it. Tony right, would yeah. go, "How much is that going to cost us?" Oh my God, how much is that going to cost us? Like they had the they were promoting concerts. Remember, I don't know if you were a kid. They had a beautiful. They opened up an office together, a beautiful office um, with beautiful furniture and couches. They were promoting concerts and uh, with um, with uh, all these groups from the '60s and uh, it, it, some who. Um, so they had a show, and they, it went out of business because somebody didn't somebody didn't show up to do the show. Um, Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. Okay, remember that group sure. from the '60s? I mean, we okay. played with them many, right. many, many times. They didn't show. He was the main. He was the he was the closing act. He was the main of, of one of the events, yeah. and he didn't show up. I don't know what happened. He didn't. My father wanted to kill him. He didn't show up anyway. The company went out of business. It cost him a lot of money. So Tony always had stuff in his mind, like how much is that going to cost yeah, us? How yeah. much is that? But he always looked out for your your father. He always helped your father. And uh, so my father was away when Vicky got married. John yep. Gotti's first daughter, Vicky. Sure. And he was him and Connie Francis. Yep. Sang got Vicky's wedding. John loved your father. Loved. John Gotti loved your father. You know, John was so nice. I got to yeah. tell you, the, yeah. you, know, you know, every time I had come across John or meet John with dad, mm -hmm. he guy couldn't have been any nicer. Yeah. And it's so funny, the picture that's painted of yeah. this guy through the media, and, and yeah. I get why they yeah. do that, you know, but, but, you know, no one ever knew that this side of him. That he, he was just a nice guy, yeah. and even Junior, for that matter. Yeah, I think your father signed at Junior's yes, wedding, too. Yes, he did. I was at Junior's wedding. There were yeah. many, many times I've ran into Junior, and yeah. I'd just go over and say hi, and he couldn't have been any nicer. Yeah. One time I was with friends, and Junior was at another table, and I went over to say hi, and I, I asked for the check. The check's already paid. Yeah. You know, he was like, no, just yeah, he's such like a nice father. guy, and it's so yeah. unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. You know? Your father went to John's trial. He went to John yeah, Yes, he all did. Over the he got a lot of, uh, a lot of, got a lot of press yeah. about that. Yeah. I mean, the FBI was, weren't happy about they that. They weren't happy yeah. about that. Yeah. He got a lot of, uh, you know, I remember our show at Westbury Music Fair right after that trial when Dad showed up there. Like, people were calling him bomb threats. Yeah. He had to yeah. end the show early yeah. because of that. Um, really just weird time, yeah. you know, because... 
I, I mean, he was just there to support an old friend. Yeah, it, exactly. It had nothing to do yeah, with. Yeah, your father anything. wasn't a criminal. He was our friend. He was a friend. So he was an entertainer. That's all it was. You know? I mean, look, we all have friends. Some friends are, yeah. you know, are different than Believe others. Believe me, right? the wise guys love to hang out with guys like your father and Frankie and all them. They want to be around celebrities. Sure, of course. Yeah, they love it. They love it. Frankie Sinatra, all of them. Well, listen, we could go on and on about I your could do father. this all I day with your you. father. It was a pleasure. Love you, Thanks man. for coming You're the best. on the show and stay in touch. Yeah, for sure. All right, that was great. Thanks for wrapping it up. I just found out we have a little more time. So could you just talk well, about, like, um, you can say whatever you want. We have more yeah, time. But yeah. uh, Fat Andy, what, could you tell us, like, you talked about him. What was he like as a person interacting? I'll, you, I'll, I'll ask him. Yeah, what, you so you met, you met my father at a very young age. What was your impression of him throughout the years? Just so you know, we're at 30 minutes. As long as you want. Well, because well, I'll end it with that. We'll end it with because well, you know I already said how I feel about his father. Right. Now he could say right. So, yeah. so like I said, we hit the one now. So we hit the one. The game just got postponed. So I'm not leaving. I know it's raining. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Thank cool. God you didn't get me the Met tickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, he's the cameraman for the for the for the ball game. I was the at the Met game. So my my oh, you were there last night. no, not last night, oh. but my friend my friend Shari is. Best friends with Steve Cohen's wife. Oh wow! So I, I sat in yeah. Steve Cohen's suite. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Awesome. that must have been cool. Slam, you know what? I'm trying to do business with the guy anyway. So yeah, let him buy some stocks, right? Planting <laughs> some seeds, you know. Yeah. So you, like I said, we did a half hour already. You can go as long as you want with this, and then uh, we'll do. We'll finish. I'll, 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 well, once he talks about his father, and I'll just interject what I felt okay. about his father, and then we'll close okay. it out. Father. All right. All right. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So you met my father at a very, very young age. I mean, you were a kid before your sister was born. I remember your sister was born when you moved into the house in Howell Beach. Yeah. So throughout the years, like in the beginning, you didn't know my father was a mob guy. So throughout the years, as your relationship developed, what was your sense of him? Well, you know, it's so funny. Uh, first of all, he was always Uncle Andy. Right. You know, um, Never question how he's related to us. It's not, you know, it is what it is. You know, we, we were the kind of family that my mom would call everyone cousin so-and-so yeah. or uncle this and that. And so it's Uncle Andy and Aunt yeah. Jenny, yeah, your right. mom, right? Yeah. So they were always there. Um, I never thought anything of it, like when Dad used to take us to the, to the you know, the club, club on Liberty and sit there with all the guys. I never thought of it. I just thought it's Uncle Andy's place and he's always cooking. Yeah, always. And I just thought maybe it was like his restaurant or something <laughs> like that. But he was always so gracious and so sweet to us. Always gave us big hugs and kisses. He would throw a few, a few bucks yeah. in my hand, like, yeah. here, put this in your pocket, your sister, do this and that. He was just so sweet. And it wasn't until... Probably, you know, when I got into my teen years that I realized what Uncle Andy's business was. Right. And I was like, oh, and, and not until I see, saw some movies and I started <laughs> understanding La Cosa Nostra and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but it didn't change my opinion of him. Right. He was because he always treated us like we were immediate family. Yeah. yeah and wow. that was amazing. I mean, I never thought anything of it. And look, not for nothing. I mean, when movies like The Godfather come out or even Goodfellas for that matter, which I felt like Goodfellas was probably closer to yeah. like the yeah. real life, right? Yeah. Um, it kind of glamorized it a little bit right. and made me even, a, a, and, and it's, it sounds weird, but I was even a little more proud that this was my <laughs> uncle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, not that I ever used it to my advantage, right. but I knew I could always pull that card of if course. I had to. Yeah. I never had to. Thank God. Is, thank God. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, he was always amazing. I remember your mom just being super yeah. amazing to us all the time, yeah. too. And my father loved to cook for your father. He oh. used to they your father's pasta was all. The best. Still the best. The best. Yeah, the best I, I ever had. I used to tell him, what do you put in it? He used to go like this. He used to start with his face. <laughs> Even Frankie <laughs> Valley used to call him up from California. What's the, what's I'm the coming in. Yeah, what, what, yeah. what, are you going to cook for me? And he, and he would come with your father and your mother and his wife at the time. Marianne. From, yeah, Mary, Mary the Ann. blonde. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was beautiful. Yeah, I used to. St my father used to kick me under the table. I, I used to. <laughs> my yeah. father used to kick me, uh, and they would come and eat dinner at my house. And I remember the first time. Well, the first. I remember the first time I met your father, and then I introduced, of course, my friends to your father. They were like, "Oh my God, Jay!" He would give them his autograph yeah. and everything. And the same thing with Frankie. When he brought Frankie to my Frankie Valley to my house the first time. I was just a little old. I was still a teenager. And I went to the pizzeria that day. I remember it was on a Sunday. And I, and my father was cooking for them. And he just met Frankie. And and I went to the 
to pizzeria and, and I told my friends, I got to go home in a little while. Frankie Valley's coming to my house with Jay. And they go, oh, you're full of shit, Frankie Valley and Jay. I said, I'm telling you, he's coming to my house. So I took a couple of them to my house and they were sitting at my kitchen table. My friends were like, <laughs> they were like, Yo, Frankie, Frankie used to come to yeah. Queens all the time. All the we time. lived in the house. Yeah, yeah. Frankie used to come pick me up and take yeah. me to the toy store on Cross Bay Boulevard yeah, and yeah. then drop me back yeah, off. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, it's strange because a lot of people, you know, they, they feel like you about my father and then they find out who he really is, like, uh, and what he done. You know, I mean, he committed some serious acts of violence and all that. Sure. And But they never really changed their opinion of him. I mean, because he, he was just good to people most of the well, time. You, you know, you, guys like your dad, I mean, and, and I could probably say this about other guys involved in that world. They, I mean, they didn't, I mean, they only did what they did within yeah, their world. They exactly. never, right, they, they, yeah. if you were just some civilian, you're not going to be yeah. messed like with. John like John Gotti, he loved your father. He always looked out for your father. I mean, your, your father, when John became the boss, that was the greatest thing that happened to your father. Oh he had my father, loved him, and now oh he had, John God. Gotti's the boss. John Gotti, he, he, he had carte blanche. He really did. Yeah. Like, I remember like when, when, yeah. when John was made, you know, the big yeah. boss, what that meant for dad. Like dad was so, first of all, he was so proud of John. Yeah. I mean, cause he's known knew John since he's a kid yeah. pretty much. Right. Mm -hmm. And then to see him elevate to that level and then just know that he had dad's back yeah. all the time was, you know, yeah. I mean, for me, it was kind of cool too, because I knew what a mess my pop was when yeah. it came to his vices and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we all, yeah he, he was a little out there. And, you know, some people, I don't know if, you know, there was some rumblings too, like when, because a couple of guys wrote articles and there was always a little rumblings about, you know, Jay is mobbed up and this guy's mobbed up, you know, other entertainers sure. that were mobbed up. You know, a couple of people try to... Well, makes made, made yeah, for great stories. Yeah, right. right. You know, a couple yeah. of people try to, you know, write derogatory stories about sure. him, like he's mobbed up, especially when he went to... The, the trial, the court. Yeah. I remember it was all over the newspaper that Jay was there. I mean, Anthony Quinn went to the trial. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people went to the trial. Well, it's funny, you, you mentioned that whole thing with, you know, Jay's mobbed up and this and that. Mm -hmm. And those stories didn't seem to take any hold here in this no. New York metropolitan no, area. Not at all. No, cared about no, that nobody here, cared but, about know, it. No, nobody but it, cared it made for good theater yeah. in, elsewhere in the country, yeah. I guess, yeah. where people just, all they knew from like mafioso stuff was like yeah. The Godfather yeah. and movies like that. Yeah. So. You know, I there, remember there was a stigma. Yeah, I remember one guy what when your father a bookmaker and your father was into him for a lot of money and we were at we sat down. I, I happened to be at the sit down and uh my father just told the guy, You're not getting paid. The guy went, What do you mean I'm not getting paid? He goes, You know who he is, you know what he does, and you took his bets anyway. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean by then your father had a little bit of yeah, a, reputation a reputation about of gambling. Like don't Take Jay's bets. Yeah. Like, plus, he's with Fat Andy. Don't take Jay's yeah, bets. Any, any bookie in right. this area should know yeah, better. Don't. And right. he didn't. And my father goes, you knew who he was. You knew who he was with. And yet you chose anyway to take his bets because you're a greedy bastard. And now you're not getting paid. Yeah, that happened quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, uh, believe me, I, you know, I think to the day he died, he thanks God for guys like your pop. Yeah. And, you know, listen, John, we all, I had, I had, I had a drug problem. I'm in recovery 34 years. I mean, everybody's got their little issues, you know, sure. but, uh, but your father lived in a dangerous time with, with you know, with the mob was the mob then. When your father was gambling and, sure you know, was. And, and, and all that, that was when the mob was the mob. Today, it's a whole different story. But back then, you could have got hurt, you know no what? matter who I, you are. I, I bet there are plenty of yeah. stories that I don't know yeah. about, you yeah. know, that, you know, could have yeah. impacted yeah. him. And as great I'm as, sure you know yeah, some of them. As great too, as an entertainer know? as he was with the gambling issues back then, he, he could have got seriously hurt no matter oh my who God. he was. For my sure. father did help him a lot, but my and my father never made any money with him. It wasn't, you know, people think, oh, Andy must have made a million dollars with Jay. No, Andy didn't make. No. Andy wasn't didn't have that relationship. No, it was, Jay, like, it was a I mean, don't get me wrong. They try to make money together um, yeah. many times. I mean, why not? But it was just a relation. A friend. It was out of friendship that my father did what he did, and your father did what he did. Yeah. Even with John Gotti, it was out of friendship what John did for your father, and even as much as Tony Lee yelled. He took care of because he, he, he was all he was like Tony was just like a little dog that does a lot of barking sure. but won't bite you you know what I mean like always look you know when Tony passed away when did he pass away by the he way he passed away in 1993 wow February of 93 we were at the your father was at the funeral we were at the funeral and his Tony's mother would cry and say 
What is everybody going to do now? Who's going to take care of everybody? The streets are... Cr the first time I ever heard she said, the streets are crying for you. The streets are crying for you. She would tell him while he was in the coffin. What is everybody going to do now? Who's going to take care of everybody? Meaning me, your father, my mother. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the streets are going to cry for you. So everybody liked him. I mean, and he liked, and, and he, vice versa, he did, you know, he would, he, he sang at their weddings. I mean, he yeah. did whatever, he did whatever he could do. It was one, you know, he did whatever he could do for them. Oh, he appreciated yeah. Yeah, everything he did whatever, they did for yeah, him. Are you kidding me? That, that, they, <laughs> they got him yeah. out of a lot of jams. Yeah. I mean, think about it, right? Yeah. yeah, but those were the happiest times of my life when I used to hang out with him and travel with him. He used to take me to Puerto Rico and. Oh man, oh, man. Yeah. You, got, you probably have some amazing oh, stories. God. I have some stories <laughs> we can't really talk about them. <laughs> yeah, talk yeah, about that off camera. Yeah, we'll tell you. I'll tell you later. He took me to Puerto Rico. He made out I was his equipment manager, so I would get comped everything. Sure. You know, yeah. yeah. He put me down as his equipment manager. Um, and Tony Lee's cousin Sonny came with us. I don't know what he put Sonny down as. I remember Sonny. Yeah, Sonny. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he bought. He moved into the house when you moved. Yeah, yeah out. I remember Sonny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. He moved into the house and how it's so funny. My father bought that house for fifty thousand. In Howell Beach, 10 rooms. Remember how big sure. it was? With the wrought iron gates and the brick Beautiful. walls. Then you you moved in. Your father never bought that house. You moved in, whatever you lived there, a couple of years. Then you moved out, and my father sold that house to Sonny and his sister for 75000 cash. Sonny's family turns around years and years later and sold the same house for 850000 My father... To the day he died, he cursed my mother. You made me sell that house. You made me. Yeah, well, now God only knows how much that well, house is worth. We all know worth. hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Yeah, it's got to be yeah. worth million, over a million dollars. At now, least w way over a million dollars, right yeah. on the corner piece. Of, it was a beautiful house, right on the corner piece of property, brick house. And it was in that new Howard Beach yeah, section, yeah, which is yeah, like, you yeah. know, I mean, that's people want to live yeah, there. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But as soon as we moved out, the, he, Jay, would, your father was the only one he would put in there. He wouldn't put anybody else in there. He, he, he told your father to go in there because you were just a kid. I think your mother was pregnant. You were yeah. a little kid, and my father made him go right in there because you were living in some apartment, I think, at the time. Uh, or a house. I, I don't remember. Yeah. I'm not sure. But all, all I remember, though, is uh, I went to PS207. I was going to say you went to school there, too, PS207, right? PS207, yeah. and John Jr. was a few grades. like uh, 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 yeah. yeah, when I was yeah. like in third grade. He must have been sixth grade, maybe yeah. seventh grade. Yeah. I remember John Jr. was there too. Um, yeah, just f funny thoughts. Thinking, I, I still to this day zip into Howard Beach to grab a slice at New Park. Of course, why <laughs> not? Yeah, I, why not? I passed there last night. Yeah, and then I, we, I still take friends to Don Pepe's. Don Pepe's, yeah. yeah. I don't. Best. I can't go there no more. Unfortunately, you, you but, can't go there. But, uh, uh, it's not. Wouldn't it be a good idea for you to go there? <laughs> but that was my favorite spot. Don Best Pepe's. baked clams in the world. Go, yeah. yeah. I used to go there with your father. Yeah. Can't sneak you yeah. in there. <laughs> no, when Sierra was alive, your father, Sierra liked your father too, Sierra yeah, yeah. Perone. Your father got along with it. everybody, got a, and he used to make everybody laugh. Well, he was, the, he was uh, funny, he had a great it. sense of humor. He was great I mean, to have him around. My father used to take him all over with him. I have a picture I showed you, I think I put it on your father's, on the fan club of, at the barbecue. My father had shorts yes. on and came to the, my, to, he used to come to all our barbecues. Oh my but God. But you going to see him, you know, when, when we used to go to his concerts, that was like, it was amazing. It was amazing how he sang. It was amazing. His voice was just, um, that's why they called him The Voice. Yeah, I mean, currently, I mean, people still, still talk about yeah. his voice. On the last time I saw him was at, in, in Long Island. The last time I saw him sing in uh, 04 or 05, before I left New York, was the last time I heard him sing, your father. Wow. I, think, yeah. I don't even remember the last time I saw you in person. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, definitely it was a long, a long time, time ago. ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Well, listen, it was a pleasure. I love you, we man. We could go on forever. Of Me course. Too. Yeah, we'll do it again. For sure. We'd love to.